we want to find the Laplace transform, which is big F of S, of the function F of T equals three. Looking at the definition below, suppose that F of T is a piecewise continuous function for T greater than or equal to zero, the Laplace transform of F of T is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of F of T times E raised to the power of negative ST dT, where S is greater than zero. So for this example, F of S, is equal to the Laplace transform of three, which equals the integral from zero to infinity of three times e raised to the power of negative s t dt. Now because we have an improper integral, we need to rewrite this using limit notation. So for a quick review, looking at case one, the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx equals the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So notice how we substitute b for infinity and then introduce this limit notation. So this is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from zero to b of three times e raised to the power of negative st dt. Now for our next step, let's go ahead and find the antiderivative of three times e raised to the power of negative s t dt, then we'll come back and evaluate this definite integral and then find the limit. So let's first find the integral of three times e raised to the power of negative s t dt. Notice how we need to perform u substitution where we'd have u equal negative s t and differential u is equal to the derivative of negative s t with respect to t times dt, which would be negative s dt dividing both sides by negative s. We can write this as negative one divided by s du equals dt. So in terms of u, we can rewrite this as the integral. Again, dt is equal to negative one divided by s. So we can write this as negative three divided by s du. And this would just be e to the u. So the antiderivative is just negative three divided by s e to the u plus c, but u is negative s t, so we have negative three divided by s e to the negative s t plus c. But remember we had a def integral, so going back to our first slide, we have the limit as b approaches infinity of, again this is a def integral, so we can leave off the plus c, and the antiderivative is negative three divided by s e to the negative s t, our limits of integration are from t equals zero to t equals b. So now for our next step, we'll find big F of b minus big F of a, and then we'll determine this limit. So when t equals b, we'd have negative three divided by s times e raised to the power of negative s b minus, when t is zero, we'd have negative three divided by s times e raised to the power of negative s times zero. Simplifying, we have the limit as b approaches infinity of, for this first term, let's write this using a positive exponent by moving e raised to the power of negative s b down to the denominator. So we'd have negative three divided by s times e raised to the power of positive s b, and then here, e to the zero is equal to one, so we have minus negative three divided by s, which becomes plus three divided by s. And now determining this limit, remember s is greater than zero, so as b approaches infinity, the exponent on e approaches infinity, and therefore the exponent is increasing without bound, and the numerator is fixed at negative three, so this term approaches zero, this term is not affected by b, and therefore the limit is equal to three divided by s, which is the Laplace transform of f of t equals three. So to summarize, the Laplace transform of three equals big F of s, which we now know equals three divided by s. So going back to our first slide, of course we enter three divided by s, now I do want to mention, after we do several examples, we'll stop using the limit definition to determine Laplace transforms, similar to how when we first found derivatives, 
we used the limit definitions, but then we started using a table of derivatives. And just like there's a table of derivatives, there's also a table of Laplace transforms. And here are a few formulas for basic Laplace transforms. Looking at this first row, if we have f of t equals one, the Laplace transform is big F of s equals one divided by s. Notice how because we had f of t equals three, if we multiply one over s by three, we get the Laplace transform of the constant function f of t equals three. So for each example, after we use the limit definition to find the Laplace transform, we'll also look for the corresponding formula in the Laplace transform table. I hope you found this helpful.